It's up guys, this is Ray and welcome to Asian Filmist. And the movie we'll be talking about today is a 2017 film To Each His Own, directed by Narushima Izuru, uh, the director of films such as The Solomon's Perjury Duology, both films which are absolutely brilliant. You definitely should check it out if you have the chance. And needless to say, I went into watching To Each His Own with high expectations. And not only because I'm a fan of the director, but also because I'm a fan of one of the lead actors in the story, Fukushi Sota. So this movie stars not only him, but also Kudo Asuka. And this movie is an adaptation of a novel of which I haven't actually read. But the story of this film seems like one that anyone can pick up and enjoy. It's about a salary man who's played by Kudo Asuka and he's kind of uh, upset with his life. He experiences a lot of trouble at his workplace, a lot of abuse from his boss, and he's under so much stress that at the train station on the platform, he is about to faint and fall into the tracks as the train is coming, but he's saved by this young dude who speaks in a Kansai dialect, who's played by Fukushisota. And this dude goes to him and says, hey, long time no see, you know, what have you been doing? And he comes off as one of his childhood friends. Of course, the salary man has no idea who this dude is has no recollection of their childhood together but he just kind of goes along with it and so the salaryman has no idea who this dude is he has no recollection of their childhood together but he just kind of goes along with it and goes out drinking with him and thus starts the budding of a really fine friendship between the two dudes so let's talk about the positives and the negatives the positives first, the performances by the two lead actors were fun and excited to watch. The chemistry between the two leads were um, was amazing. The way their lines just bounced back and forth between each other, the, the, the way they interacted together. And I especially liked the performance of Fukushi Sota as expected. Fukushi's character, Yamamoto, was colorful, he was lively, and he was charismatic and you just can't help but fall in love with this character and you can't help but be charmed by him. And conversely, Kudo's character, Aoyama, he is sympathetic for, for any of us who has worked the, the nine to five grind, the full day, the full time job during the day. It was really easy to be sympathetic with Kudo's character and overall feel sorry for his uh, his circumstances. Another thing I enjoyed about this movie is that it throws in uh, just enough mystery uh, into the narrative to keep you hanging on for a little bit longer. As I mentioned earlier, Aoyama has no recollection of Yamamoto of their childhood together, but then they just become friends and it just keeps going on, it keeps going forward, but then you get introduced to more mysteries about Yamamoto's character and that really, that really leads you on and that really intrigues you. You want to find out more about Yamamoto's character and when the kind of mysteries they add on about Yamamoto Yamamoto's character, well the end result was we get a lot of time equally spent between the two leads. I think usually in these types of stories there is one main character and one supporting character. Of course the main character has a lot more time spent into developing his character. However this movie did well at balancing between the two leads and developing the two leads and getting you to know more and like uh, each of the two characters. So this movie has a lot of charm beaming from its lead characters and has a very positive message with its story. The movie dives into some pretty dark territory involving depression, uh, stress at the workplace, and even suicide. Aoyama, he gets so depressed with his situation that he compliments any way to end it all. But then loud Yamamoto comes in and clears away those thoughts and they go out and do something fun, whether it be uh, drinking or just enjoying the, enjoying the outside. And all that being said, I felt the only negative I have to say about To Each His Own is the ending. I thought the ending could have been done a little bit better. I don't know, for me it kind of ended just a little bit too whimsical for my taste. And overall, what do I think of To Each His Own? Well, if you haven't seen my best Japanese movies of 2017 video, this movie was on there. I absolutely love this movie. I love the the messages that it brought forth, its positive messages regarding uh, the themes I mentioned earlier. And also the demographic it seems to be targeting. This movie is for wage slaves, as, as someone had put it in uh, one of the reviews I read online. As I've said before, I feel those of us who have been stuck in the nine to five grind 
can sympathize perfectly with Aoyama's character. No, you're stuck at this boring job that you absolutely hate. You want to progress, but everybody just keeps putting you back down. It's like, what do I want to do in my life? This movie explores those kinds of questions. But I feel it does it in a, not a lighthearted way, but you know, relatively speaking of what it could have done. Yeah, it was pretty lighthearted. And on top of those themes and messages explored, we get a very entertaining bromance between Fukushi Sota and Kudo Asuka. Do I recommend this movie? Of course I do, especially if you're on the 9 to 5 grind, if you feel like you're a wage slave, I feel this movie would sing to you. And so there you have it, those are my thoughts on To Each His Own. What did you guys think? Or what kind of questions did you guys have? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Asian Filmist. Follow on Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. And once again guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video. Take it easy.